Hi, and welcome to my art channel. Nori here is helping me today. <laughs> he is super clingy. So over my shoulder though, you might see that I got a very, very cool Christmas present from my parents. Shout out to mom and dad. Love you guys so much. Also, here's your grand kitty. He misses you. <laughs> but I got this amazing easel. I'm so excited to try it out. So I wanted to share it with you guys if you have seen it. This is called the Artristic Easel. And the idea behind it is that you can hook up your canvas to it. And unlike a traditional easel where you still have a lip at the top or at the bottom, sometimes both, and that kind of interferes with being able to paint your canvas all the way down to its edges, as well as being able to rotate it and just manipulate it overall. So the idea behind this easel is that you can rotate your canvas, you can tilt it, lay it flat, put it fully upright. It's supposed to be extremely versatile. Um, I'm going to put Nori on his chair so that he can help me from this side while I show you guys what it's about. All right, so I've got my helper sitting on his little stool to the side here. He's got a window that he can look out. And here is the artistic easel. Just so that you can see what I've got in my hands here, here are the two books that come with it. You have the quick start guide, which is what I use to put it together. And then you have a more in-depth guide because there are actual tools that come with this easel so that you can tighten certain parts and be able to change some things around. But for the most part, you can pretty much get started just by doing this and it assembles really quickly. It came packaged in a box with the tripod by itself. This top part here is extremely versatile. Right now I have it locked in place and it's actually pretty sturdy. So what I want to show you guys is attaching a canvas to it. I'll get to that in just a second. Just to show you how versatile it is, I'm gonna spin this around. All I did to spin this was just to undo this part here, which is funny because it allows you to rotate your easel. But if you want to take this top part off and it doesn't come with this actually attached to the legs just for shipping purposes, you actually have to tighten this and then you can turn this and it's like unwinding it and you can actually take this off of the tripod, which I think is really cool because ideally everything about this is going to last and hold up really well but we all know parts go bad so in theory i think it's really cool that i could always fit it to another tripod if i needed to the tripod that comes with it though is really sturdy and it's adjustable for different heights you could even have it you know down to in theory put it on a desk i don't know that i would do that just because that's how short the legs can go it doesn't go any shorter than that but i'm gonna go ahead and lock this. I just put the bottom legs out. So I didn't need much of a height for this. The way that I'm making sure that it's all level is I'm just putting the bottom legs out on all of them and leaving the top ones locked. If you're concerned about that, there is actually a little level thing right there, which is pretty cool. Same thing with right here, because you can actually tilt this and angle it, which I love. So I can have it all the way level. If I wanted, I can tilt it just a little bit. I'm gonna have it completely upright though for attaching the canvas, which I believe is what is recommended in the guide. I'm loosening this so I can turn it. Oop, actually. And then as far, and then as far as this pole goes, there is another thing right here, just a little knob and you can put this up and down. And then the arms, this is how you actually attach your canvases. These you have to put in yourself and all it is, is there is a little silver button guy, you know those where you push them in and try not to pinch your finger to all heck, <laughs> which I usually do. So these slide in and out. When they are locked in place, they also have two tabs and you can slide it out. Okay, that's far. That is, you know what, let's measure that. The arms themselves extend out to 20 and a half inches. So what that means is that you can get a decently large canvas on here. 
I don't know how sturdy it's gonna be with a large canvas, but to be fair, I had a really large canvas on my traditional, what do they call them? I wanna say that's a H frame easel, maybe. I don't know enough. But on my standard easel, even when I put a big canvas on there, it still gets really wobbly on the sides depending on how locked in it is. And again, what I hate about that is the only way to really keep them super stable is when you have that lip at the top and the bottom and you've got it, you know, really secure. And I hate that because I personally like to paint out to the edges of my canvas every time. I know in theory you could just let it dry and move it, but I want access to every edge of my canvas. The other thing you might be noticing, which is the first thing that I noticed, and it made me kind of question whether or not I even wanted this easel anymore, and that's how do I attach a smaller canvas? Because in theory, how this works is you would take a really big canvas, and I have a small one to the side here, the one that I want to attach, and what it does is it attaches to your stretcher bars. I zoomed in, I want you to be able to see these are what you attach your canvas to, and this is how you're able to paint out to the edges of your canvas, is you're attaching it to the back of the canvas via the stretcher bars. Because these little guys, once you take the plastic caps off, are metal screws. Don't worry, you're not supposed to have to put it very far into it. And I would like to point out when you take these off, they actually have little areas on the back here where you can store the caps so that in theory, you don't lose them. I'm probably going to lose all of them because I was the girl that lost literally every Barbie shoe she ever had ever. They're all gone. <laughs> no clue where those are. Knowing that that is the theory behind this, my earlier statement makes a little more sense now, I hope. So obviously this isn't going to work for my little canvas if I have to have it all the way up here to be attached to one of the bars. And this is really kind of loose, plus I don't think you actually have the tension, which is what I'm guessing all of this works on, to be able to hold my canvas in place. However, this is where if you jump into the deeper guide for this, not the quick start guide, kind of the bigger book, it has a couple variations at the end and they highly encourage you to try out different variations. And if you come up with one, you can let them know and they will add it to their I don't know if they said website or book, it's one of the two, and you can be like, ah, oh, yeah, that was, that was totally mine. <laughs> What's really good about this, from what I could see in the pictures, is this is good for oval canvases, it's good for even oblong canvases, that's another thing you might be thinking. What if it's tall enough this way, but really short on the sides? I wanna do a large rectangle. That's actually extremely feasible because you can really still just brace it with the top and the bottom. I feel like that's still gonna be strong enough depending on the stretcher bars. For this little canvas though, we have to do something different. This is naturally set up like this with the four bars all around it. And I'm just gonna take out the bottom bar. I am using a pencil to push in the little metal things, which let me go ahead and Take a look at this. So these are your arms. The little metal silver button that I'm talking about. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Here are those. They're pretty, that's pretty sturdy. I'm not gonna lie, they did really good. And then here are these little guys, which what I'm going to do, I'll just demonstrate it on this bar again. So little caps, little black things on the back. In theory, go there. So, all we're gonna do here, oh here, with those off, the idea that they recommend is that you're gonna unscrew these down just until you only have the pointy tips. Oops. There we go. And that is gonna be the idea once I rearrange my bars over here we're gonna give it a try. This is literally the first time I've tried to attach a canvas to it at all. I couldn't help but unbox it as soon as I got it because that was just super exciting. And I wanted to make sure that it was all good, especially because it was a gift. Depending on your size of your canvas, you could probably leave it in there just for storage reasons, but I've got my space pretty well organized and it's kind of big. It's impossible to lose, right?
The next step that I'm going to do is, again, these are just screwed into place. So I'm taking off the plastic caps, putting them on the back, and I'm undoing them all the way and screwing them in from the other side. So rather than having the side ones pointing up, I want their little screws pointing down instead. Well, I'm just going to get these fixed real quick. So in theory, what they want me to do is take these and just press them onto here, just enough to actually get it into the wood and then give it no more than three turns to secure it. That's betting on me having grip strength that I don't know if I have. We're gonna try. Okay, I have this turned around. I have those. I'm just gonna push. Oh, that seemed like it worked. I really thought that was gonna be tougher. What? That makes me really happy. All right, you. Let's make sure you're... I don't feel like it was in there. Oh, tension. Okay. So that shows you if you think that maybe you have it attached and it pops right off which is great in theory when you're done. I just need tension for it. So I'm going to try, okay. I'm, I'm not going to turn them. I'm just gonna put it on there, which it goes really easily. And then this is where you can see. Oh, there's no way to turn this, I'm not gonna be getting the sides, I'm basically bracing the top and the bottom. And so I don't even need the outer two screws on either arm, I'm just using the inner two. So we're really anchoring it with one, two, three, four points. Which means I'm going to bring this up until, yeah, I see that at the bottom. Oops, let's try that again. I feel like this is one of those things that probably gets really easy the more you do it over and over. It becomes a little more intuitive. But right now, it's kind of a pain. Which is absolutely not a bad review because I feel that way about my other easel. Anytime I want to move it up or down, it's kind of a pain. What I just did, since it's hard for you guys to see, is I unscrewed both of these inner screws until they were actually flush, so there's not really anything sticking up. And I'm going to put this up as far as it'll go so that it is flush with those, lock it into place. Again, these arms seem really sturdy, which is good because that seems to be the entire concept behind it. And now I'm going to try to push them in. So my canvas is in place and that took way less time than I thought it was going to take. I just want to show you the back setup here. So these two top ones on the top arm are actually firmly in place. They're both screwed into the frame. And then on the bottom here, what I have are both these center ones are screwed into the frame and I just created tension. They are not necessarily flush. The screw's not all the way in but I'm not really concerned about that as long as the board feels really solid, which it does, it doesn't feel like it's going to move, then I'm good. Since I didn't need these outer ones, I was getting ready just to screw them back down and put their plastic caps back on them. And then I noticed on the back, I don't know if it's for this or not, but there are two slots in the back here where these screws totally fit. So I do feel like it was probably to get them out of the way if you didn't need them. So I just screwed the outer ones into the back, put the plastic caps here, and what's so nice about that is now they're not in the way. The only thing in the way of my canvas right now, and that's just because it's a smaller canvas, so you would not have this issue on a canvas that fit the frame, are these two little black things on the side. But even then, I don't feel like I'm going to run into them as my brush strokes. Like, they're definitely going to get painted. <laughs> they're going to get all the paint on them but it doesn't ruin it. I can still paint mostly around my canvas and that's a really small gripe considering the alternative is that I have all of the bottom and top blocked off. A tiny little portion on the side, not a big deal. And now with this canvas on here, I can 
rotate it, I can decide, let's see. So I can tilt it any which way that I want it. I can also go all the way flat. You can spin this thing if you want to get at different angles, to get at a different part of it. I personally probably want mine about, about like that. I like mine tilted just a little bit. That being said though, I like it. I think this is gonna be really good. If I do this, let's grab a brush and just pretend like I'm painting on it. Grabbed my Comic Leaf big brush because why not? I know you're probably thinking, Shanae, that's totally a varnish brush or whatever you think it is. Maybe. Or it's just a really cool brush that I bought on sale and I wanted it. I never have any reason to use it. So, demo totally works. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm getting into it. It's honestly, it's still holding up really well. It shakes a little bit, so it has some give, depending on your setup. Again, maybe if it's closer to the center, it won't have that. Even if it does, it still feels sturdy. It just feels like it has a little bit of give to it. Right, I'm going to keep playing with this and figure out exactly how I wanna set it up for my painting. I think I might bring the arms a little bit closer back to center, just to make sure that it's nice and steady. Because I totally forgot, duh. You can adjust the height with the center part. I wasn't even thinking about that. Metal part goes up and down. Totally adjustable. So <laughs> I'm probably going to reset the arm to get them closer to the body and then paint a little something and hopefully film and share that with you guys. I hope your day has been going fantastic and the holiday season is treating you well. Maybe this year was wonderful, maybe it wasn't. Maybe you're super looking forward to next year. Either way, I wish you all the best. Take care of yourselves, drink lots of water, and definitely stay creative. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.